we're transitioning towards that, that world where we can basically get along with each other. Interesting. Um, Jan, what a, what a great conversation and what a great education. Tell me what's the one thing that you personally would like us to know about your experience, your education, how you collected the information. You call yourself a plotter. What's, what's the one thing that you think is something for us to know, to remember, and to really stay focused on what is the primary thought that we should stay with in this process of understanding your work as a as a researcher? Well, I think the thing is to to understand that nobody has even an idea about what's going on with these things. Mm-hmm. No one. I don't. I'm I'm as puzzled. I'm puzzled. I think the government is puzzled, and I don't think they have superior data. I think they have better data than, you know, all all these people running around, uh, you know, uh, speculating on everything that happens. I believe there's something to them, and uh, I believe there's, uh, there's ways to find out more about them. But I don't think it's been done yet. Okay. And so I, what I'm doing is I'm trying to walk around and pick up on the beach and pick up a pretty rock. Mm-hmm. That's 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 my thing. And the other thing is I am trying to preserve what uh, uh, others and myself have found to date because. So many of these things just end up going away. They're ephemeral. I mean, mm-hmm. people collect. I like I told you about the yesterday. The the guy had, had two barns to store all the material he had collected, and of course, the uh, he had a, they were exposed to the elements, and so two barns full of stuff uh, ended up being two filing cabinet drawers. Mm. That's tragic. So that's that's the two things I say. I'm looking for uh, a, a, a piece of knowledge that I can find and trying to uh, preserve uh, what I what what's been collected by uh, others and myself. Okay, so we've got two problems with keeping that information. First of all, I guess the government has more information because they have more resources to store it. Right, but in the other pieces of information that individuals worked on, there were two hazards. One was uh, in a, incorrectly stored information, and then the other one was the angry wife. And the angry wife uh, <laughs> sounds just as destructive as the, as the poor weather conditions. So, um, <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. And okay. it's not just Both it's not just that nature. you just you know people get tired of this. They've done it for for ten, fifteen years. Mm-hmm. And they've spent a lot of money, maybe if they if they've actually uh, done some investigations, and they're tired of it, and they feel like they haven't gone, you know, they haven't solved the problem. Right. Uh, they may be contributed to the solution, but nobody knows yet. So some people just take all their stuff and throw it away. <laughs> so it's you know it's. Uh, uh-huh. Uh, spend a lot of money and a lot of time, and then, you know, just you know, get disgusted with the whole thing and and chuck it. Huh. Um, um And you know, you don't even need an angry wife. Sometimes it's just angry relatives. They, <laughs> um, uh, my friend Dave Clark in in England and some of his colleagues, they went to uh, to to one guy's uh, home that had passed away and uh uh the relatives showed him uh, uh the remains of a bonfire that they had had with his UFO stuff. Oh gosh. Yeah. Oh no. Oh, and that, no. that is a lifetime of his his collection collecting and everything. Oh no. Yeah, so Was it like an intervention? No, he, it he wasn't died. an intervention. He was dead, and they just destroyed all his work. It's like a bunch of barbarians, yeah. vandals. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. It's, uh, it's, um, I mean, because I think it's, you know, I, I, I think there's something in the subject. They didn't think anything was in the subject. They thought it was a waste of his time, so they just uh, burned it. I have to say, there's a there's some and stories of work. vengeance in here. Yeah. 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 So, huh. Well, um, that's not right. Jan, Jan, it's so um, it's it's sort of it sort of explains itself because that is kind of a you know reoccurring sort of topic. These people come in and destroy it, but um, these people become consumed with it. So I find it interesting that you were able to take and work on this project as a government employee, um, retire, take up another profession. And then just become an expert in this area and publish your own works. So you sound like you had sort of a balanced life, or am I imagining things here? Tell me. Well, I, yeah, you know, I, I guess people would call me obsessed. Okay. To 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 say the least. Mm-hmm. Um. <laughs> <coughs> and. <clears throat> Most, say, academics would say, you've wasted your life. No. Really? You've wasted your life because there's nothing to this subject. In fact, some huh. you know, if you, uh, some academics say this is a threat to Western civilization. They've said that. Huh. This stuff should, you know, it, it's like the... Uh, it's 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 like the uh, Inquisition in in the Middle Ages. You know this this stuff must be destroyed. Hmm. You know, uh, apart from women. Books well, what about and like for that. you? Like you you say you say some people would describe you as obsessed. So, how would you describe yourself? And what sort of drives you? What what draws you towards this subject matter? <clears throat> Well, I want to know what what's at the end of the rainbow. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. You want you want your Roswell. You want no, I don't your, want Roswell. I don't believe that Roswell is uh, is relevant. I believe it's really? it's a it's an attempt to make money. And uh, oh, uh, NASA said NASA said show us show us some fragments or something uh we can put our hands on and we'll we'll be interested all of a sudden roswell became the focus of ufology it's the keystone of so american do ufology real, do real ufo experts think like oh come on roswell what no a they don't well some of them are starting to get that way i mean you know they're they're oh. they're they're, they're uh, and, and a lot of them have the idea, okay, Your the colleagues? government's hiding everything. The government's hiding everything. Uh, yeah, I think the government has more and better data. But mostly it's not yeah. recognized if it's significant or if it is recognized as significant. It's not that much better. I kind of am in, on the same page with you when it comes to these sort of conspiracy ideas. You know, yeah. a lot of people are like, oh, the government's hiding stuff. I've been in, you know, I've worked in some pretty significantly large organizations. And what I've noticed is like the biggest conspiracy that's happening is that none of us know what, what's going on really. It's like organized chaos. Yeah. Like it's really, we don't have a very good handle on much of it. And it's sort of like the big conspiracy is that there is no conspiracy. Yeah. The, uh, um, I like this one story. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, air attaché to Brazil okay. uh, went to, uh, and the Brazilians had some rather fantastic sightings. And so uh, he was he was there, and he asked if he could see uh, things that they they collected. And then he's writing a report back to back to the Pentagon, and he says he, he he describes some of the incidents, and then he says, and I've looked at this stuff, and they have stuff going back to the 19th century that they've collected, and he says, I always thought this subject was hogwash. He said, 
I don't think so now after seeing this collection. Okay. So, huh. so that to me um, is interesting. Now I uh, I think we have better stuff in in our uh, you know they they they've released all the uh the UFO uh project blue book case files or they say they have let's put it that way i i know that there's a lot of them that are missing or things that never reached blue book i i can okay. demonstrate that but okay, do uh, it do it do it it's good it's good do it yeah so so uh so I can demonstrate that there's there's times when you know the uh in the newspaper the uh, the uh the on scene investigator is identified probably with a picture standing next to the witness <laughs> and that case didn't make it into project blue book okay so is it hung up somewhere in the bureaucracy or is are they is is there something that's uh, no i I've got better than that the uh, huh. every significant uh, intelligence report that the Air Force gets, they make a an index card. They they okay. assign the intelligence report a a serial number and they make an index card about it. And so I I've I've been able to get some of these index cards from the National Archives. So I've got 800 of these things, and then you try to uh, find them in Project Blue Book, and a significant number cannot be found. So where are they? What happened to them? Destroyed. Yeah, destroyed, or somebody else has got them. Uh, anyways, the, the, the thing is they have a, a uh, master file. Uh, of uh, of all the uh, intelligence reports that they ever got at the Pentagon. So if you if you know the uh, if you know the uh, serial number, you can you can uh, you could theoretically ask for that report. I don't know anybody that has. Okay. I know okay, somebody that a... was invited to come down there. I mean. Um, my colleague, who is no longer here, uh, Robert Todd, they got so tired of him putting in FOIA requests for 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 documents. They, they said, "Why don't you just come down here? We'll let you use our index." Of course, the index probably is now on is now computerized, but I've got I've got earlier things, so I've got I got eleven hundred. Um, intelligence reports I'd like to look at. And I've identified about uh, somewhere around 800, not just from the index cards, but from other sources. You know, uh, references and other documents. So we don't have that document. So that's that's one of the things I'm, I'd like to... So you could say, where, you know, where are they? And so they just invited him to come down, but he couldn't because his, you know, he he's the sole care of his mother at the time. Um, Jan, we're out of time. Matt, it's been wonderful having you. Matthew Harnick of California, Richie Rich, Thank and you. this is Suzanne Wyman, uh, who is uh, doing a pretty good job of co-hosting. I love her voice. And so, Aww. Jan, what do you think? Uh, you think you've got enough information to? Come back and share with a lot of the newbies for 2020, because we still don't have any people paying us dues yet, but we're working on it. <laughs> Susanna, <laughs> we got MUFON. I paid my MUFON dues, everybody's, for their archives, so I can get theirs. But uh, Jan, Jan and I don't have time to do us a, a article thing, but we've got websites. So his is Project. 1947.com for anybody interested and all my groups uh, because we haven't been organized and paying in dues we've all been open source Facebook groups I've got to get us some way to help us in the future because they're starting to charge me different money you know for my SSL certificates 80 bucks a piece for each year and all our groups and in our archives and our databases so 
Uh, I'm paying for all this, so folks, if you want to help us, let